Welcome to the Deflux for VUR YouTube channel. I'm Kerry Red, Training and Education Lead for Palette Life Sciences. Today we're joined by my friend, Hal Schurz. Hal, today we were going to talk about case studies that looks at the various types of children who are often diagnosed with uh, urinary reflux. And okay. so to begin, I'll read a description of a child and you'll tell us how you're gonna take care of them, so. Great, thank you for that kind introduction, Carrie, and it's, del it's a delight to be with you and to join the parents out there who are turning, tuning into uh, this podcast. It's, it's great to work with you. All right, so the, the first patient you told me about was a two-year-old girl, and she's hospitalized with a 104-degree fever. She was found to have a UTI, and she was properly treated. Then this was turned out to be her second episode of a febrile UTI with a hospitalization. And the radiology department did a renal ultrasound, and the, their finding was normal. And then the child had a VCUG, and it showed bilateral grade two VUR. What would you recommend for this patient? Well, Carrie, this is a, a child that we're seeing more often. Um, the um, Academy of Pediatrics has changed their recommendations about who should be tested for reflux and who should not. And um, the uh, Academy of Pediatrics recommendations is different than that of the American uh, Society for Pediatric Urology, which has really not changed one bit. We recognize that reflux is still the number one cause of a urinary tract infection with fever in children, but yet the Academy of Pediatric recommendations is uh, not to study children with a VCUG um, after their first febrile urinary tract infection. I think that's a big mistake. And in this child, she has already had two hospitalizations, um, the second of which probably could have been prevented had she been studied with a VCUG after her initial urinary tract infection. So there's an excellent chance that this child with low-grade reflux will grow out of her reflux, and she should be started on um, daily long-term antibiotic prophylaxis to reduce the risk of another urinary tract infection and give her about a year to see if she will grow out of it. And according to our VUR index that we have come up with, she probably has an 80% chance of growing out of this. So um, this is a child that uh, uh, should be managed medically. And uh, we would see her back in a year after a repeat VCUG provided that she didn't have a problem such as a breakthrough urinary tract infection, which is an infection that may occur despite being on prophylactic antibiotics. Well, that's a comforting prognosis for the family and caregiver of that child. Um, let's move on to patient two, which is another interesting case. This is a three month old girl. Um, she had a febrile UTI and treated as an inpatient, which means in the hospital. She had a normal renal ultrasound. She was sent home with a one week prescription of antibiotics specific to her infection. And nothing further was discussed before discharge from the hospital. Her primary care physician referred the patient to you for further assessment. So what do you do for this child? Harry, much like the first child who did not get treated properly and then got sick with a second infection, this child very likely would be a, 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 young, a youngster who had the same kind of uh, uh, clinical course um, were she not to get treated with prophylactic antibiotics. And I would explain to the parents that even despite the um, uh, urinary tract infection that was treated. And in spite of what her pediatrician may have mistakenly told her about um, not 
studying her because she falls into the group of children that the Academy of Pediatrics recommends does not get studied until they have a second infection or, or uh, more. This is a child that I would absolutely send for a voiding cystic urethrogram of ECUG and then follow up with them afterward. I would keep this child on prophylactic antibiotics until we have obtained our VCUG. And uh, there's a, a chance that this is an infection that is not associated with reflux, but we must assume that it's reflux until proven otherwise. Well, again, that's uh, comforting advice and, and good care. Um, we'll move on to our third patient, which is uh, different now. Is a six-year-old boy was referred due to having a urinary tract infection. He was successfully treated as an outpatient. His primary care provider ordered a radiology testing. His ultrasound was normal. His VCUG, though, showed left grade three vesicoureteral reflux, and his reflux occurred on late bladder filling. So what would you counsel the parents to do on this patient? Terry, there are a number of nuances here that I think need to be pointed out. The first of which is a recurring theme that we've seen in all of the patients, which is that they've all had normal ultrasound so far. And so you can't use ultrasound as a, a barometer for whether or not a child has reflux or not. You, you must get a VCG to um, make that uh, determination. This child is a boy, so that's a little more uncommon for uh, reflux in boys, but we see it, you know, not infrequently. Um, this is a six-year-old. So a six-year-old boy has a very low likelihood of growing out of the reflux, despite the fact that we're seeing reflux occurring late in bladder filling. This is one of the findings that pediatric urologists um, utilize. We don't go by the reports of the radiologists. We review our own films and look for certain, um, certain nuances, certain findings that might not necessarily be picked up by radiologists. And one of them is the timing of reflux during bladder filling. Now in younger children with lower grades of reflux, bladder um, filling late in, uh, oh, I'm sorry, reflux late in the bladder uh, cycle late in bladder filling or during voiding has a better chance of resolving than when we see reflux occur early in bladder filling. Nonetheless, this is a boy who is six, who has grade three reflux, and the likelihood of this going away on its own is extremely unlikely. And so this is a child that I would present the different options to the parent, open surgery, um, maybe a laparoscopic reimplant versus endoscopic correction with deflux. And I would go through each one of the pros and cons. And, um, and I would, I would uh, be honestly, I would um, interject my bias, which is that I think that in this young man, um, doing an endoscopic correction has an excellent chance of successfully correcting the reflux and uh, allowing this child to get back to normal activity as soon as possible within, within 48 hours and the patient would get to go home the same day and, and the success rate is uh, in the mid 90s. Great, that's, that's very encouraging as well. well let's, let's move through in the interest of time to um, patient number four. Patient number four is a 10 year old girl. She's referred due to recurrent UTIs. She's been diagnosed with bilateral grade two VUR. Um, she's been seen by a nephrologist who ordered a renal scan and both kidneys showed renal scarring. The, the girl continues to have breakthrough UTIs while on antibiotic prophylaxis. And she also has daytime wetting and she has, goes at least three or more days between bowel movements. Now, what do you tell the parents in a case like this? Well, 
clearly this child is 10 and has reflux that will not resolve on its own and it needs to be corrected. However, this is a child who has what we refer to as bowel and bladder dysfunction. That is um, when the bladder is not emptying as it should because of voluntary urinary holding behaviors. And, um, and it is uh, commonly associated with constipation. Children who uh, experience bladder and bowel dysfunction typically have problems such as breakthrough urinary tract infections when they have reflux, despite being on antibiotics. They have daytime accidents, they have nighttime accidents, and sometimes even fecal soiling. You cannot successfully correct the reflux if you do not first address the bowel and bladder dysfunction. And it may take quite some time to get to where you need to get to, but this is where pediatric urology um, uh, practices excel, and this is why it's so important to go see a pediatric urologist with children who have this kind of problem because no other group of doctors recognizes what this problem is and how to manage it appropriately. And it may require medication, it may require uh, biofeedback, it may require other types of approaches to get this bladder to function well, but the ultimate goal is to get the bladder to empty regularly and completely, um, address constipation, make sure that the child is eliminating completely and regularly daily. Once those problems are addressed, the nighttime wedding problem should, the day and nighttime problem should resolve, and that should be your barometer for when it would be reasonable to proceed with corrective procedures. And again, if you're able to do that, then um, this is a child who would be an excellent deflux candidate. Well, that's great. Thank you for that insight. And it's been great to, to hear you talk about these different types of patients. And I'm sure the many families uh, and, and caregivers who watch our Deflux for You, our YouTube channel, and specifically this episode, are going to recognize their own child. And there are many other, you know, there's, there's other um, presentations. Every child is unique, Carrie, and has different um, findings or certain characteristics that may distinguish them and set them apart. But this hopefully gives most parents a general idea of where their child may fall on that spectrum. Well, oh, great. It, everyone's looking for similarities and likes to be part of a group. Um, I really have to thank you for um, all that you've done in helping create this series and with your um, expert opinion and knowledge uh, coupled together. Um, hopefully our viewers have, have had a great journey and received a lot of information that they just can't get from reading. So again, thanks everyone for joining us and thank you, Dr. Schurz for being our guest faculty. Thank you for having me, Carrie. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you.